Hello, Facebook. It's twice in one day. Um, this time it's going to be a different type of topic. Uh, <laughs> you got to see our previous uh, truck convoy discussion that I get so passionate about. And another thing that I get passionate about is real estate. Um, but when we look at real estate and normally when I come on to do a Facebook live, I'm going to be talking about the rules and regulations, landlord and tenant board issues, giving some suggestions, talking about what the government's doing or the elections happening, uh, what we can do to advocate. Also, just getting to know about different stories that other landlords are dealing with and how you know they're dealing with a difficult tenant or giving some tips on how to deal with uh, difficult tenants. Um, and all of us know, you know, the real estate market is crazy. It's crazy hot for, for selling. It, it's crazy for renting. And people are outbidding each other, like crazy amount of money. Like I think I just seen a, a price of a house in Kitchener going for over 650000 over asking price. And I'm like, whoa, like how are we supposed to, we're supposed to get new investors into this market when it's so crazy. And how do we continue to keep growing our portfolio and, and creating that income, uh, that retirement plan that we have. And so I've been watching everything and I'm like, this is a perfect opportunity to have Erwin on. And Erwin's going to teach us something different. You know, I think you guys need to uh, not put all your eggs in one basket. I think we have a lot of different ways of investing. And this is something that I keep telling our elected officials that landlords, if you don't give us the tools that we need to continue to keep investing, we are looking at different provinces and we also look at different ways of investing. So I have Erwin here tonight and he's going to tell us a little bit something different um, about investing and, and how we can start making money. And it's not so much of we waiting for this market to do what it's going to do. We also see that we have money waiting in the bank or we uh, money that we can play with money that we can help put to good use and, and to gain more income for you. So before I, I we introduce what that way is, I'm going to get you to uh, uh, welcome Erwin here with me tonight. And Erwin, tell us about you. How did you get into, obviously you started into real estate once, right? So now you're into something else, but how did you start getting into real estate? Uh, when, when I graduated school, I, uh, I graduated right after the dot-com bubble burst. So it was a very, just after 9-11. So a terrible time. Uh, job market wasn't great. Uh, when I did get a job, I was grateful. Um, but, you know, opening up that paycheck, I saw those things that come out, my, come out of my paycheck. And I had a girlfriend and I owned a car and I couldn't, <laughs> I had no savings. So I've always been on a pursuit of looking for side hustles that worked. Uh, so I did stocks, uh, that didn't go so well. I'll cover that in my presentation later and I started investing in real estate around 2005, thanks to my girlfriend at the time, uh, who's now my ex-wife, but, uh, I had lots of benefits from, from getting into start, starting to real estate and just to, and so I, uh, I've transacted personally on over 40 properties. I don't own them all now. I currently hold uh, 12 properties, um, and then to your point about how nuts this market is, I've been talking to uh, an, um, an, an administrator in a school. Uh, so they don't make a heck of a lot of money. And she's trying to buy a house for her infant son for, you know, like an RESP so that, you know, to hedge in case so that that child, their, her child can eventually be able to be a homeowner one day rather than like being a renter for life. Hmm. And I'm telling her like how we invest and it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> a duplex, like you're saying, like the market market's just wild. Uh, a duplex in Hamilton sold for one point two million dollars. Oh right? That's and, crazy. And the only way that's going to work to cash flow is if someone puts in a garden suite. So we still have to wait for, for that to be uh, to be legal to do, and then you have to come up with another two hundred thousand dollars on top of the down payment to build that garden suite, right? So that kind of capital is not available to most Canadians without who aren't receiving financial help from parents or who aren't already homeowners. Like a millennials, I don't know how a millennial is going to afford that without yeah. help. Uh, so, and then even my own experience, you know, cash flow is not what it used to be. Uh, so I've always been looking for, again, I've always been on a pursuit of uh, side hustles that work, that provide cash flow, or that create wealth. And uh, we found a learned a pretty good one, and that's what we're here to talk about tonight. 
awesome. I think it's yeah. going to be exciting because I know that the market is nuts. I know that a lot of people have a lot of uh, money still sitting aside because they've been waiting and the numbers have been going up a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but show us, show us how we can make money, what we need to do to, you know, start expanding and, and looking elsewhere for different ways of investing. Because I know I'm excited to see your presentation. Mm -hmm. Oh, happy to share. And just to preface this, all this, I'm still holding all my real estate. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, uh, Again, I'm just looking for something that provides a bit more cash flow, and that's a lot easier without uh, tenant troubles. Because uh, I'm, I'm sure your audience has heard about those things. <laughs> yeah, I had a I had a but tenant text me last night. Which I had a tenant text me last night. The, the, so she's in the basement of one of my duplexes, and we have a new tenant that moved in upstairs. And she told me, on top of their one dog, they have five puppies living with them, <laughs> and oh. the place reeks. And I'm like. I have, what recourse do I have? <laughs> you want to get into that topic? That's no, I don't. Right, dude. Me on that. I, I connected the two of them so they could talk it out. Because I, I told my tenant uh, to do anything proper could take weeks or months <laughs> in terms of disciplinary uh, process, right? Yeah. Versus, you know, human to human, tell them that you're that you're grossed out you know so yeah so by the time that the you, you deal with it on a legal matter the puppies are all grown up and they're out of the house and you can even do that <laughs> so, that's, so when, when you don't want to deal with the tenant stuff and you don't want to have to uh yeah. you know you want to look at different ways of doing it with less headache you know i think i i've been following your the, the group that you have with the with your your students in there and a lot of them have a really a lot of good things to say, just how it's it's changing and shaping uh, the way that they invest. And yes. that's why I thought for for you to be on tonight, just telling our, our members exactly, uh, you know, timbits of what you they can be learning in order to mm -hmm. help them expand, because we always talk about different products and different services um, in order to keep helping us grow as investors. And I, I, I th can't thank you enough for, for taking the time to, to come on and, and be able to share this with uh, our members on Facebook and my personal channel, as well as on YouTube. Happy to share. It's all we ever do. We, like Sharon, I love to share what we're doing. And, you know, people have a hard enough time the way things are. Mm -hmm. So, again more than happy to share so let me just try to launch this i've lost my view of you <laughs> there we go i'm still here <laughs> all righty so give me one second while i get my display settings correct i just started doing screen sharing so i'm still still getting the hang of this stuff it just takes me a moment to share screen Okay. All right, Kayla, I can't see. You can see. You can see the proper slide. What it's supposed to look like. I can see an ours, but I can't see it on the screen. Do you want me to just add it to the stream and see if that works? Uh, hang on. I shared the sh my screen. If I hit share screen, should that be should that go to the stream as well? Well, do do uh, share screen again. And then I'll see your thing. And then I can, I think it's going to be my control of, of probably adding it into. I like stream here better than zoom for me. <laughs> okay. Let's see if this works. So now yeah, there we go. And then you see my title slide. Yep. We can see it now. All right. Perfect. You have control in it. Can you, can you, you, yeah, you can slide it now. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, so, so Ken and I talked about what the show topic was, what this presentation topic was about a whole half hour ago, because uh, this is an abbreviated demonstration of what I do uh, for, for for those who are interested in in what stock hacking is. And uh, I'm actually going to share a story about how I got my cousin involved uh, over a, uh, a red wine induced rant. <laughs> this rant wasn't about the government. This rant was about how. My cousin. That was my rant. <laughs> <laughs> well, my rant to my cousin, because we're Chinese, so we cannot stand not making money or not or, or wasting money, and so yeah, it's my red wine induced rant. This I will get to, and I'll get to the, I'll get to that. So just to start off, because these are financial instruments, you know, like stock, stock options, these are uh, regulated 
So just a quick disclaimer, Kayla and I, to start off, Kayla and I want the best for everyone possible. We believe in happiness above all. Uh, so what I'm here tonight is to share experiences and for educational purposes, none of this should be considered financial advice. If you ever want to talk about real estate, I am licensed in real estate. I can talk until I'm blue in the face. Uh, you probably want to cut me off at some point, but I am licensed to talk about real estate, not licensed to talk about stocks, bonds, those sorts of things. All right. So in case anyone doesn't know who I am, uh, cause likely not, uh, cause you're all friends of friends of Kayla. Uh, my name is Erwin. Um, I'm a, I, I'm. I'm from Oakville, Ontario, and that's mainly in Hamilton. Uh, I'm a family man. That's me and my kids in the top left. Uh, I have a fear of heights. Uh, it's funny that I'm telling this publicly. <laughs> uh, and then at just some, some point in my life, I decided that uh, I would no longer be, um, like, I would no longer, almost like not be a victim to mental blocks that I have. So I, I made a switch in my mindset in that whenever I felt uh, there was something that I couldn't do, I'd face it head on. Some of my greatest fears, other than public speaking, <laughs> is fear of heights. Uh, for example, if I'm at my friend's condo and he lives on the 10th floor, it's hard for me to stand on their balcony, right? So uh, me in the red jumpsuit, that's the CN Tower edge walk. So that's pretty high up. Uh, and then uh, where I'm bungee jumping, that's from uh, a place called Macau Tower, which is in China. Uh, and at the time, it was Guinness Book of Records, uh, Book of Records highest bungee jump from a building. Uh, some, yeah, it's. I, I would. <laughs> if Cherry didn't go first, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> because I'm my, gonna show you up. <laughs> no, it's hilarious because they were like. Who wants to go first? I'm like, ladies first. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. And then I was like, I'm thinking about, I'm trying to think, how do I back out of this? How do I back out of this? Cherry goes first. And like, I will never live this down if I don't do it. So I did it. <laughs> and it was, it's the hardest, it's one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. So if anyone wants to test their fear of heights, that's, that's, that is challenging. That is challenging. Uh, some may know me from my podcast. It's one of the top podcasts in Canada. Uh, iTunes statistic wise, it's number 88th in business in all the world. It's in the top 50, I think ish for, for, uh, in the real estate space, whatever it's, it's, uh, it's not that important to me. <laughs> I've been named a top 20 influencer in the Canadian real estate space. So that's real estate. That's not investor. So I was named in the, I was named along with folks like, uh, like the Property Brothers and Mike Holmes and stuff like that. Uh, also, one uh, I am a real I am a, I am a realtor. I've won the award of being Realtor of the Year to investors four times in a row. Uh, I'm also a real estate investor. Like I mentioned, I still hold twelve uh, twelve properties. And with my wife, we co-founded the Hamilton Bass Brigade, and we're here to talk to you tonight about Stock Hacker Academy. And then, uh, in case we lose anyone, uh, just to start off, we have a free report to share with. Any of Kayla's friends, all you need to do is go to stockhackeracademy.ca slash OLW. And we have a free report. If you go to the website, just click on the get the guide, free documents, but it's only 25 pages, not too bad. It's a lot of images, so it's not that not that hard to read to uh, give you um, to basically elaborate on what I'm sharing tonight. So I'll go into more detail, give you more examples of what we're talking about tonight. So, take, so again, it's, uh, the report is called How to Build a Six-Figure Side Hustle Trading Stock Options. And that's what we teach in our program. This is a free guide, uh, roughly 25 pages. Go to the website that I have listed there. And as an FYI, 20% of corporate profits go to charity, uh, the charity that Cherry and I co-founded. Uh, we've had to pivot several, several times in the pandemic. So most recently uh, at Christmas, we donated uh, 700 pairs of winter boots to, to poor kids in Hamilton, along with about 1,400 or so fleece uh, sweatshirt type things. So anyways, so uh, what is stock hacking? Uh, most people don't know what it is because I didn't either. And the, the, here's the sad part. I went to university for business. I went to business school. So I learned the theory behind all this stuff, but no one taught us how to apply the theory and actually make money. And you know the last people who are gonna tell you how to stock hack? It's the bank. You know the craziest part? So uh, again, I'm a realtor. I have a team of five agents. I have a client that works for one of the big banks that has the name Toronto in it, <laughs> they're on Bay Street. He literally works in the Bay Street office. 
and they do exactly what I'm sharing tonight. They do exactly that, but they don't tell you because they don't want you to do it themselves for you to do it yourself. And also they don't want to have to explain how they're making money behind the scenes. Now, a uh, quick side note, this is the book that launched my real estate investing career uh, as an investor. I think most people are familiar with this gentleman. You've probably, Kaylee, you've probably even had this guy on the show or you're probably gonna have him on the show soon. <laughs> are you hooking me up with him? <laughs> you, li you like him, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you, you guys on, my, on the channel here? That would be <laughs> awesome if you could do that, or just put it out there, man. <laughs> So Robert, so uh, point is, I think everyone's read this book. Kaylee, you read this book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. You're familiar. Oh, I, I, we had a board game out, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We should do a board game. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, in this in this video, you can see he's gained a few pounds <laughs> compared to this book cover. But he's a stock hacker too. So anyone can anyone after done watching this, you're watching this online anyway. So go to YouTube afterwards and you watch Robert Kiyosaki explain. Uh, what, uh, how to sell stock options, which is the fundamentals of what we teach in our course. So anyways, uh, and I'm, I'm just going to quote him in case anyone doesn't have the time. I have the quote there. Anybody who wants to be a professional investor, be it stocks, bonds, insurance, real estate, or business, options are very important. And I couldn't agree with him more. Because if you follow the money, so first off, is everyone familiar with Tiger 21? Kaylee, you heard of Tiger 21 before? I'm sure my husband does. He's always getting into the stocks i swear like i he'll he'll look at what the st stocks are doing before he even t takes my text message and i'm like uh i was well i was gonna answer it but you know the i had the stocks open and i had to check it and i forgot so yeah i, I he probably knows i'm more like we need to talk yeah and i need to talk <laughs> so uh so these the so tiger 21 folks do a lot of stocks uh so first off, Target 21 is a network of rich people. To join this network, minimum 10 million investable capital to join, 10 million US. The average has like 17 or 20 million, right? These are rich people. So this pie chart shows you, so this pie chart shows you the results of a survey of Tiger 21 members where their money is. So I think I always think it's a good idea to learn from rich people. Where they put their money? The biggest slice of the pie is real estate, 27%. And then the second biggest slice of the pie, not far behind, public e which is public equities, right? So that means stocks. I think bonds is on here. So yeah, so it doesn't mean include bonds. So this is just stocks. And also that would include stock options. So stock hacking would fit into this category. So um, I know a lot of investors are really just heavily in one area. I don't know if that's the best thing when, especially when you compare yourself to what the richest people are doing. Also private equities, I do private equities, which are all real estate too, <laughs> right? And uh, like I mentioned, I, I want some diversity. Um, it's not fun, in my opinion, to own a lot of real estate. Uh, it makes a lot of money. It's, I don't know if it's fun. Kayla, would you say it's fun? <laughs> um, that's why I have to go to the salon, Erwin, <laughs> the spa. And, and cover the grays. But yeah. at the same time, I, I like, you're good at what you do, but it's always nice to learn something different too. And and tenants, if you don't know how to deal with tenants, they will teach you for free. I don't know if it's actually free. So for, here's just some pictures of uh, the last property I sold. So th the tenants have moved out. They weren't bad people. They they they. I think they. This is uh, this is during COVID. Yeah, this is during COVID. Uh, I think I think mentally uh, they're having a tough time, and this is how they left the property when they when they left. <laughs> they're, the, the tenant there's a there's like three friends. They couldn't get along, uh, and this is how they left our property. <laughs> so it cost me. I've seen worse. Me, I know, I know. It was, this is only ten grand. I look at this and I'm like, yep, yeah, I've seen yeah, worse. Part, and then, and then that's the sad part. It could have been worse. It could have been worse yeah. uh, because we decided to sell it. It did cost more. It, it caught like to, to just clean it up would be a couple thousand, but because we, we had to get it ready for sale, it cost about 10 grand. So this was single family home. So we already had no cash flow. So if we did have cash flow, goodbye cash flow because it cost us 10 grand to get it ready for sale. And I sold, we sold this one. Mm. A bit of frustration. Probably, we'd make more money if we held it. But again, 
uh, you know, mental space, happy that we sold it. Uh, here's another property of mine. I don't know how, how everyone feels about climate change out there, but it seems we're getting floods more often. This property is the second time it flooded. <laughs> and, and my deductible, thank God. <laughs> Thank God my insurance company still insures me. Again, this is the second time it flooded. Uh, my deductible is 10 grand. This is a student rental. Good 10 grand deductible, goodbye cash flow, let alone the headache of dealing, going through a, a remediation of a flooded basement. And uh, and it's not like I hadn't tried stock before. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I was, I've always been looking for side hustles. You know, I think generally people prefer more passive. I think everyone prefers more passive. So I was doing stocks, I was doing small caps, I was doing mutual funds. I lost a lot of money back in 2008 in the market crash, which, which started in 2007. Uh, I lost around 30,000, which to me was a lot, which is about, which, it was about half of my savings, right? So that's when I turned away from stocks and focused on real estate, right? That's why most people know me from real estate, from the real estate world, because I, I did really successful there. And I've helped a lot of people be successful along the way. And, but I know what people always say, Markets always crash. Markets always crash. Markets always crash. That's what they always say, right? And it's funny because I, I was Googling looking for an, an article, and of course there wasn't one today, right? Uh, like this is clickbait, folks. When when people talk about market crashes, when there isn't a market crash, it's just clickbait. No different than this crap, right? Look at look at the headline: Officials decry desecration of monuments during Ottawa protests. Don't get me started, Erwin. Don't get me started. <laughs> well, that, that sign will cause permanent damage, you know, right? Uh, so my point is, read beyond the headlines. First off, media is there to trigger you, right? And here's an example. So, so like, if you're going to categorize trucker protests, people would say that's on the right side, right? That's on the, on the, politi on the political spectrum. It would be on the right. Well, here's, here's one. Here's an article headline picture that would be considered on the left, right? This is the G20 protest. I remember this well because I worked on Queen. I worked on Queen Street at the time. I walked by this. I walked on the street, and for the most part, that protest, those protests, were very peaceful, extremely peaceful. But what gets headlines? There's this. This this picture was across, was placed plastered all across the country. That police car burning, one incident by some bad people. Because you don't think bad people show up at every protest because they do, right? And then they get like, and then, and then that's, what the, that's what the media focuses on, and then they paint everyone else with the same brush, right? So a case we have a case on the on the right of, of the political spectrum, a case on the left, right? Point is, the point I'm trying to make is read beyond the headlines, right? For the most part, the protests are are peaceful, right? And again, we're talking about market crashes. And then in my journey of trying to make money passively investing, I met Brian. So Brian's a friend of mine. He came on my podcast because when I found out what he did, when the market crashed in 2000, when I lost half my money in 2008, 2009, Brian got freedom, right? He, he bought lots of companies that paid, bought company stocks that bought, that paid dividends, right? So like, I need to learn this and not only do I need to learn this, it's just part of my personality that I like to share. Right. But the problem is, so I got into it again in about uh, 2019, I got into this stuff again because a friend recommended that I learn how to do, uh, how to do what we call stock hacking today. But then the market crashed again <laughs> in 2020 for anyone who follows. Uh, I think you're familiar. Uh, there's this whole thing called coronavirus and the, and the stock market has crashed. They crashed uh, over 30%. And, and funny enough, I, <laughs> piece of history is the bottom of the crash was my birthday. <laughs> so quick truth about me, I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm not perfect. Uh, so in 2019, so in, uh, I got to 2019 and then the market crashed in 2020. I made a lot of beginner mistakes. I was too aggressive, too greedy. I lost 40 grand. Uh, that's a, that's a US dollars. Uh, it's no different than like real estate investors who get way too aggressive. Like a beginner investor watches HGTV and thinks they can go flip properties. It, it's possible. It it often doesn't end, it doesn't end well for ever, uh, for for a lot of people, right? That was kind of like me. Uh, I had some I had some concepts and some theories. Didn't know how to apply it. 
expo exposed myself too much uh, financially and I lost a bunch of money. So I started over, I forgot everything I knew and I hired a professional coach to train me. His name is Lee Lowell. So he's an American, uh, he fixed the holes in my strategy. And as a result, I was able to turn that $40,000 loss into $150,000 profit in, back in 2020. I was able to make six figures in a pandemic, right? When all these people were suffering financially, I was having financially one of the best years of my life. So the irony is, uh, it's crazy. And I wish I could share this with everyone. Uh, so this is Lee, this is my coach. Uh, I call him Professor Lee, because it makes me sound Chinese. It sounds funny that way. Uh, anyways. He's he's considered the godfather of stock options. He's an ex floor trader, so he's he's ex Wall Street. He's he so he, he's basically considered like the, a former Olympian, right? He wrote this book here called Get Rich with Options. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, I think it sells for like over just over fifty bucks. It's hardcover. I hired him pers personally to coach me, coach me privately, and then uh, and then here's a spreadsheet that I was I used to track trades that I was doing with Lee, and and pretty quickly I made twenty grand just on uh, the trades that Lee was giving me. And again, like I mentioned, when Cherry and I learn anything about uh, about wealth hacks, we want to share it because we want everyone to, uh, we want to share our journey and everyone to be on a, on a similar or better journey to get towards financial freedom. Like we, our, our mission is literally to be like the Google Maps to 10,000 hardworking Canadians to create a six figure side hustle this is literally like our corporate mission. So everyone in our company knows this, including the accounting business, including my real estate business. So, so we went on to teach. So since, uh, so we started Stockbacker Academy in 2020, right after the crash, which is pretty crazy. Uh, we've gone on to, to teach uh, this strategy to almost 900 investors and over 90% of them are, are real estate investors. And the ones who aren't want to be real estate investors which is why we kind of titled this presentation, Real Estate Investors Who, who Stock Hack. And uh, from our community, some of, these, uh, some of you guys probably know these people. Like I had John Bedham, he's a very well-known, reputable realtor in Barrie. He reported the 57% re return in his first year. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here's Chef Anderson, who, who is a, he's a chef. He lost his job uh, because of the pandemic. And so he, he refocused his efforts. Uh, he started another biz business that was less COVID, COVID affected. And he was able to, uh, he's actually cash flowing like 1% a, um, a, a week. So uh, on, on only $25,000. So he's doing fantastic. He's incredibly grateful. I think some people know this lady, Susan White Livermore. She had a whole lot of fun. She's made 50, she made 51% in her first year. This was a fantastic year. You know, if you just closed everything and you could take the rest of the year off once you hit that kind of number. Uh, and I just, I want everyone to appreciate none of these people are financial experts, like finance gurus in terms of like stock market or accounting or any of that sort of stuff. Here, here's Matt Spada. He's a gym owner. So, and like, that's like the worst business to own in a pandemic. So his business got shut down. They lost all their income, uh, but he took Stock Hacker Academy because uh, I've known Matt for years. In his first five months, he was able to return 21%. Um, so again, if, if, I, if we're losing anyone's attention, we can you can stop here. Just you can just write this down: StockHackerAcademy.ca. Kayla's posted the link in in the in the Facebook and the YouTube as well. Uh, slash OLW. This is a free report that we're offering to Kayla's friends. Uh, it's completely free. Just go go to the website, register to get the guide. That's a screen capture of what the website looks like. You get it's a 25 page report. It has a lot more detailed examples than I can give tonight because you know Kayla's got to get to Ottawa. I, 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 to get to Ottawa. 
Try it. <laughs> it's Friday night. <laughs> Kayla has better things to do. She's probably got a hot date. <laughs> no, but so lovely. <laughs> just with maybe with a trucker, maybe hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. As we will understand, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have some jokes, but I won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> we are alive, Erwin. We are alive, buddy. <laughs> Like you just seen the kid coming in. He's like, I want your phone. I'm like, okay, here you go. Just go in the hallway. He's like, okay, bye. I'm like, don't break it. Please don't break it. <laughs> Learn with comedy around this place. <laughs> oh, and, and just to mention, like everything that we're teaching can be done with the mobile phone. Like I, I, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned that yet. Everything we talked about tonight can be done with a mobile phone. So. I think that's where people are. I think they're they're they always do have stocks, and I think they just don't know what they don't have that that place to go to get that stock training, and they also mm. don't see the the turnaround of people, and they're always nervous. They're nervous about the stock crashing. Um, mm -hmm. But as we've seen through the pandemic, we got to see what it was like for government control on real estate as well, which has resulted into landlords trying to get out of the business really quickly because they see how you can now uh, fund and, and have to house someone who won't pay for at least a year or even more. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are like, do I really want to put that risk? And, you know, do I have to put that liability? So let's look at different options that, you know, are starting to grow. And like I said, my husband's into the stocks all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also into like the silver, uh, either physical silver or through the stock silvers um, and getting to know which stocks and people who've been able to grow, uh, you know, great income knowing these stocks. And it's it's like people call me, Kayla, you know, I got this going on with my tenant. You know, this is what I want to do. You know, what what tools do I have here? And mm -hmm. you have someone to go to. Right. Um, and that's why Irwin's here to to know that he's the guy to go to. And I think that we have to look at other ways of doing investing because the market is crazy and it's unpredictable. And with an election year, housing is obviously on the top priority of what's happening with uh, with our government. We don't know how that's going to change. So make sure that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Totally agree. And, and um, just to add to that, I find a lot, a lot of landlords, instead of being a landlord to get out of being a landlord, they'll do like private lending, right? Now that's that's great for many. I personally don't like private lending because I see the deals that are offered out there, and I and I know and I have friends who are in the mortgage business, and I see the deals that they get, and they're infinitely better than the ones that are marketed. Mm -hmm. So, so the something with that something about that knowing that that's part of why I have no interest in it personally. Personally, I think it's fine for anyone who wants to do it. It's fine if, if that's fine for you. Totally fine. It's not it's not fine for me. And also, again, I want some money. Uh, making outside of real estate because I have plenty, right? Like uh, I want some diversification. Uh, and Eric, Eric needs to come hang with me. I'll introduce him to my friend because uh, a client of mine, a real estate client of mine, uh, you know, he owns student rentals. <laughs> What's one of the worst rental properties to own in a pandemic, right? Yeah, another so blow. Another blow. So he sold it. Thankfully, he sold it to a pharmacist, right? So they moved into it. It wasn't an investor. So he had a, he found a buyer because there was like no one buying student rentals at this time. Yeah. Uh, and then he turned that money into a mansion for himself. Uh, that that is an uh, that is an extreme example of success, one of our success stories coming out of the program. Uh, but it's real, right? It's it's not what everyone does. And, and Kayla, if there's time, I'd like to give a more concrete example uh, yeah. of of what we do. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah. Like, I right. think I think everyone needs to to have it just because I was just going to ask, you know, what are you going to like? Obviously, someone's going to come to you. Obviously, what kind of what are you going to teach them exactly what they need to know to get started in something mm -hmm. like this? I know I was talking to my friend today and I told her she's like, is it public? Can I can I just join in? Like, I, I want I want to know because she put her trust into the, you know, banks and she wasn't satisfied in the way that they handled her money. So mm -hmm. and and you can tell like through all the, the preview and the success stories that you do have like these people are on social media you can look them up you can reach out to them and talk to them because i i have some of them on my friends list as well so you know they're real people that you can connect with and they'll be more than willing to kind of vouch for you know how how what they think of, mm -hmm. of stock hacking and mm -hmm. and how they're still into it today so funny enough you mentioned banks because i personally won't give a bank my money to invest for me 
but I will invest in a bank because they're brilliant at making money. <laughs> Is that bad? Is that bad? No. Am I bad? <laughs> so uh, an example of I never bank. even get to see your slides. <laughs> Can you still see? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I never even seen that. That was your next slide. And we're talking about banks. And it's like, <laughs> we are not rehearsed, guys. This is very raw. We this, just, this, I mean, yes. Just Taylor's never seen this days. before. Uh, but this is this is the literal example that I was giving my cousin. Uh, his, my kid cousin's name is Chubby. I'm going to mention that in a bit. But my kid cousin, his name is Chubby because he was a fat, fat baby. He's, he's not fat anymore. But anyways, um, he wanted to buy a World Bank of Canada. So let me let me get into this. So I wanted to use a very conservative strategy. I think I think everyone knows who Royal Bank of Canada is. Uh, for anyone who invests for dividends, for example, uh, people who want to own stock and collect dividends. So we're going to use a we're going to apply stock hacking to Royal Bank of Canada, and I'm going to explain it with uh, how I explained it to my kid cousin. So part of the thing about owning anything, no different than real estate investors. Nobody wants to pay market value. And the same thing with stocks. Nobody wants to pay market value. So here's the story. Uh, I'm gonna tell you how to get paid to own the stock you want to own anyways. So Thanksgiving 2019, before the pandemic, I was able to have my whole family. I had a whole bunch of family in my house, including my kid cousin Chubby. And he was telling me how he wanted to own 500 shares of Royal Bank of Canada, right? At the time, the price per share was $97.32. This is pre-pandemic. Oh my God, the, time, the timing couldn't have been per more perfect because these strategies work the best uh, in crashes. Anyways, uh, so the price of the time of Royal Bank at the time was $97.32. So I, I told my kid, I told Chubby, um, so again, he wants to own 500 shares. That's the current price, $97, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but he didn't want to, he only wanted to pay, the max he wanted to pay per share was $93. Right, there's, there's a discrepancy, no different than houses. There's what sellers ask, there's like the listing price, and then you as the buyer, assuming no other offers, you're gonna offer what you want. And typically it's less than what the seller wants, right? So my kid cousin, my kid cousin Chubby, only who's putting out a bid to buy shares at $93. So he needs to wait for the price of Royal Bank of Canada to come down to $93 until he, for him to be able to buy shares. No different than if you're negotiating with a seller, they if you're stuck at a price of $93, get away for the seller to come to you, right? Not the easiest, but it does happen. So I told my cousin, I told my cousin, like, did you know you can get paid for that? Like, you know, you can get paid for exactly what you're trying to do. And he said, no, you can't. And I said, yes, you can. And I said, no, you can't. I said, let me show you. So I gave him, I gave him this book. Uh, you can get it on amp. It's called money for nothing. Stocks for free. Uh, that's the name of the book folks. <laughs> it's a catchy name. <laughs> it's by a gentleman named Derek Foster. He's a six-time best-selling author. Uh, he lives in Ottawa, so this gentleman's Canadian. He retired at the age of 32, uh, doing many of the strategies I'm talking about tonight. Anyways, so it's now fifty dollars. That's an old. It used to be sixty-four dollars. Now it's uh, 50, now you can get it for fifty bucks on Amazon. Anyway, so I give my kid cousin a copy of the book. And I, I went and got, I went to the bookshelf and got my phone because I was being a good kid, good host. Uh, I didn't have my phone with me. So I went, I, I, him and I walked over to the, my bookcase where I was keeping, where my phone was. I opened it up. I showed him the app that I was using. So the app owner is called Interactive Brokers. So anyone who's interested in, in doing this on their own, IBKR is what you type into, you know, whatever store you can download the app for free. Right. And then just to, in case anyone, I've been asked this before, is this your app? Like, no, it's not my app. I surely wish it was because this company that made this app, who is, is, who's the broker, uh, they generate over a billion dollars in net income a year, right? <laughs> so it's not me, I wish it was. <laughs> and then I told him and all for everyone who's interested in trying this out, you can open what's called a, what we call a paper account to, to practice for free. So it's kind of like playing Monopoly. Like it's not buying, you people play Monopoly, it's not real. You can trade, buy and sell stocks, stock options, stocks, whatever. You can all do it all uh, simulated. So the numbers are real, it's, it's not real money, right? It's just for a practice account. Maybe get so, the kids in school to be playing with this, eh? Kids love this. Mm -hmm. 
and actually we've actually had i've actually had real estate investors come to me because they tell me their kids have no interest in real estate but they'll, they'll totally eat this up because yeah. again they can do this from their smartphone for example here uh, this is a screen capture from my smartphone right i'm showing him i'm showing him this thanksgiving so this is world bank of canada this is what it looks like in my phone the price is $97. At least it's you and not me this time. It's already over. It's not over. It's got two more weeks. <laughs> yeah, but, but the set is already over. Oh, okay. All right, go brush your teeth. So we're all back. <laughs> Close the door. You like photo bombed you on, on that one. <laughs> My kids are so goofy. My wife blames me for teaching in the night. <laughs> Mine came in and my husband was supposed to be watching him, so <laughs> at least. <laughs> uh, so Royal Bank, so that's the price of the stock, $97.32. My cousin Chubby doesn't want to pay more than $93. So what he, what I told him to do is you do what you sell a put contract. This is terminology. It's okay. It's great. No one knows what it means. But he said, if you sell a put contract, you collect 90 cents, uh, 95 cents, uh, but it's, that's 95 cents per share. Each contract, uh, he wants 500 shares. So it's 95 cents times 500 shares. He would collect $475 if he was to do what I told him to do, right? So in order to, he, he honestly had, can write a contract so that he would buy shares of Royal Bank of Canada at $93 and collect $475. So that's the cash flow of $475 Canadian because Chubby wants to pay $93 and not a penny more. And in this, in this example, I use a 91 day, a 31 day contract, right? So, and then technical, techno, techno terms, he, what he, he did, what he did was he sold a put, right? So what happens now is my cousin's basically sold insurance on Royal Bank of Canada. Should it fall under the price of $93? And he collected four hundred seventy-five dollars to do it. No different than any sort of insurance relationship. When you sell insurance, when the insurance company sells you insurance, they take money from you and they never give it back to you, <laughs> right? So again, uh, Chevy wants to own the shares, ninety-three dollars. And so when he, uh, now let me explain how that makes money. So first off, this works best right after a market crash, right? You can, you can make tons of money doing this uh, right after a market crash. So the mindset actually changes for stock hackers. They actually look forward to crashes, right? Because, because that's the most, no different than real estate investors. You look forward to crashes. The best opportunity to make money, the last best opportunity to make money was like 2008. You could argue 2017 as well, right? When stuff got cheap, when cheaper. Less expensive, less expensive is the term, I think. It's That's all expensive. People, people, people are waiting, waiting, waiting for the crash and they get their yeah. money set aside and then they scoop up whatever they can, right? Waiting for yeah. people to default, market mortgage rates are going up, waiting for people. So yeah, it's, it's, I just never thought about it on the, the stock, uh, the stock way. Yeah. And, and like we were talking about like headlines, because people like, it's human nature. Like they see the stock market run up, no different real estate, all these people running into real estate because they see that the prices are running up and then they get in. Mm. Right. And then if you get in when the prices are going up, like the, the real estate market, sorry, the stock market corrects pretty often. <laughs> it's not like the real estate market, not, not ours in Ontario at least. And so they buy high and then, they, and then they sell low. Like they get into a crash and then they sell like, Oh, stupid, stupid market. But really they're just not educated. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because like you and I, if there's a real estate market crash, if like prices correct by like 25%, you better believe we're buying. <laughs> so back to this example, if the price of Royal Bank of Canada stays over $93 for the next 31 days, the contract expires worthless, right? No different than an insurance example. If nothing happens to your, you buy home insurance, nothing happens to your home, they keep the money. They owe you nothing, right? And, and then in this case is the same. My cousin Chuck, if nothing happens, the price stays over $93. He gets to keep all the money. He gets to keep all the premiums, right? If the price should fall below $93, Chubby may end up owning the shares, but he got, but he wanted them anyways at $93 and he got paid to do so, 
Mm. Isn't that crazy? Oh, he was upset. <laughs> I told him this. Um, and this, so again, this works best in a, right after a crash. It also works great when the market's going sideways or going up. Right? It doesn't work. It's not so great when it's going down. <laughs> and again, my friend Brian uses this exact strategy and other strategies that we teach in the course to 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 so that him and his wife can retire on dividend paying stocks. Right. And I couldn't I couldn't be happier if my entire stock hacker community can replicate the same results. And then my kid cousin, when he found when he, uh, when he uh, he read the book the next week and he texted me, I feel like a loser because he left 500 bucks on the table. My cousin Chubby is a professional musician, meaning he doesn't make any money. <laughs> he teaches music. He tutors music. Doesn't make a whole bunch of money. Uh, and then he's gotten really good at this. He's 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 moved on from Royal Bank of Canada. He he does more he does much more aggressive stuff now, including like Bitcoin stuffs and like Tesla and like Nvidia. Um, and uh, then he started messaging me things like this. Uh, he had a record month of uh, almost seven thousand dollars Canadian. And uh, and then he messaged me this. You don't got a program, does Chubby? Sorry. You don't have him programmed as Chubby? <laughs> That's, I love that name. <laughs> That's his real name. That's his real name. His real name is Wilfred Lee. I should. You're right. I should. We're, we like Chubby. I just it's, <laughs> it just rolls off the tongue. It sounds cute. Like I like it. <laughs> oh, and again, because Chubby was teaching, um, he was teaching music at a at like a at a private music school, not like a real school, like those like a Long McQuay type school, right? And then pandemic hit. And then like he lost like 70% of his income because people people weren't going to take music lessons anymore. No. Right? But then he found a side hustle during the pandemic that paid him quite a bit of money. Right? He was actually making more money doing this than he was at his day job. Right? And then he went on to have some ridiculous returns. He did uh, in his first six months of 2022, 2020, 2021, 20, whatever. I thought last year, his first six months, he did like 26% in his first six months of last year. He's doubled his money. Uh, what is he now? And and last year, he made 50%. So so actually, two years in a row, he made 50% return, return on investment. Again, he's we've moved away from the Royal Bank example. He's gotten quite good at this. He's doing much more aggressive stuff. Now, That's I want awesome. to... I know. it's and, and it's a perfect example of that. You do not need to be some sort of stock guru or mathematical genius to do this because we have plenty of people in the program who were not mathematical stock geniuses like Katara Osman. You should, if you've ever had Katara on the show, she's amazing. She's a single mom. She trained as an architect. Uh, she, when, when, when she signed up for our course, she didn't even know what a stock was. Uh, but she, she, she trusted Cherry and I. She took it and... Pretty quickly, she was making twenty five hundred a week, and wow. uh, and if people don't believe me, she says it herself, right? I have it all recorded. <laughs> you can go to my podcast, check it out. Uh, yeah, so she made six figures in her first year. She's just absolutely killing it. She buys apartment buildings too. It's not like it's not like, and and it's not like stock versus real estate. I really think that these are complementary things. If you make yeah. space for these things in your life. Uh, you know, I, again, I went from losing 40 grand in 2020, and then last year, as of to make enough money to treat my kids to a Disney cruise, which we're probably going to pivot. We're probably not going to get on the cruise ship because we don't want to be locked down in a cruise ship. <laughs> we're probably just going to go to Orlando and Disney instead. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get off the boat. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that. I want to get off the boat. Prison on water. Hey, kids. In a tiny, t in like a 250 square foot room with your kids. You want that, Kayla? God, I, that's why I'm trying to find a babysitter to get to Ottawa right now. I don't want to be in the car with for six hours to, to go to Ottawa. It was okay when he was a baby. He stayed quiet. 18 no? month year old? Yeah. No, thanks. Okay. okay. So, no, uh, I think this is, you got my head thinking on this. I know my husband's yeah. always the, 
the, tr the stocks in like the normal way of stocks, but this is a twist and this is a very interesting twist, especially for the people that you're bringing on screen and knowing them and their reputation. Obviously they're not going to come out and say that, you know, it's, it's, it's working for them and it's not. And I think obviously like you want to get as much information as you can for free. And I think all landlords and, and investors were very frugal. We want as much information for free. And if it's about the landlord and tenant board and stuff. I am totally there. I'm there to help you and guide you. But sometimes you got to, you got to spend money to make money. And I think it would be a great opportunity for our members to be able to check you out and see exactly what you have to offer. And then mm -hmm. I look forward to seeing what kind of results they're going to be getting. I know my husband's probably e even watching what's happening here because obviously the kid was here, so he's not watching the kid. Um, <laughs> and I think he needs to learn what you, what you have to offer because you've already uh, been able to, you know, grow uh, who you are in your portfolio with, with real estate. Uh, and now obviously you see that, that there's not only a benefit for you to be doing this, but you're also now seeing that there's so much more that could that can make you and your members grow by all of you um, getting to to be a part of the Stock Hacking Academy and be able to provide so much valuable education that I think everyone needs to to you know be able to to invest in. Yeah, yeah. Robert Kiyosaki Great. is probably not wrong about this. There's a lot of rich people that do this. It's just not everyone shares. Not one's just transparent about what they're doing to make money. No, it's, it's the, it's the, the hush hush. And, and we've been on lockdown for two years. We don't even know what, uh, what everyone's doing yet. So it's like, it's great to see what everyone found uh, to, to help them through, through these troubling times and money's the inflation, you know, groceries are going up, everything's going up. We do have to continue to look at different ways to kind of make up for that uh, mm -hmm. way. And that's going to be through investing. So take mm -hmm. a look. We got the description in the below um, inside of the inside of our chat here on Facebook as well as on YouTube. If you have any um, no, you have a course, uh, you have a course that you do, but you don't do it all the time. When When is your next one, Erwin? Next one's pretty soon. Sorry, let me just stop sharing. Uh, the next one's at the end of February. Uh, we do we do 12 month programs. Um, there's a lot of learning to be done, so we do it over 12 months. It starts February 25th with the uh, with a boot camp, three day three day boot camp, and again it's a it's a it's a journey together. We we do monthly meetups as well, and uh, it's it's funny because our group is all real estate investors, and again, of course they're all stock hackers and they love and a lot of people from your community, a lot of people from my community, and you know the thing about the thing is. The thing about the real estate community is they're so sharing because mm -hmm. we're not really competing with each other. We we can be though a little bit, you know. There's only if there's only one great property in Cambridge on, on that's available for sale, like you and I have to both bid against each other for it, right? With stock hacking, it's com people are completely open because there is no competition. <laughs> that's what it is. I think I find that with real estate, we always have to look at ourselves as a network. You know, I think it's a very having your strong network. And I think with stock hacking in itself, you're now being supportive and also expanding your real estate network because you're real estate investors getting yourself into, into stock hacking. And I think a lot of people can really benefit from it and growing um, their portfolio and, and growing their network. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited. It to, to, to learn more about it. I know that for me with four kids, property management, uh, you know, sitting on a subcommittee with the city for housing, uh, being the ambassador to landlord credit bureau in front lobby. I would love to just wait to see if I had the time just to sit and, and take the course. But if you don't, that's why you're, that's why I got married, you know? So if I can't make it, I'm sending in the, sending in backup. So I'm definitely going to be, uh, having Eric, uh, learn. Cause I think he's doing it a different way. Um, yeah, we can chat. We can and chat. he's making money. He's making the money. But I think the way that you're explaining this, uh, this, this course and what you have to offer in the education, I think he's going to be able to make a lot more money. And I think mm -hmm. we have to not put all of our eggs in one basket. I think it's mm -hmm. great. Wow. It's a, it's a community that like, like people will, Eric would like our community because he'd fit right in. Right. Cause, well, cause, Cause stock people are generally kind of, they're not, just no different than real estate investors. If you don't find a community, you're kind of on your own, right? Yeah. You don't know. You don't know. And I, I take phone calls. And I, if anyone is watching from our my 
you know, if you have sent me a message right now and I haven't responded back to you, I will get to you. I really will. I make sure that I try to as answer as many people as I possibly can help guide you with whatever information I have, because it's about that community. And I think that's why I got into advocacy in 2010 yeah. to bring the community together and not only for, you know, just to help with the day to day operations and the residential tenancy landlord and tenant board. We have to look at different products and services to help us continue to keep growing because you can make some serious money doing stack hacking um, in a way that that money that being made, you can get that bigger building that you want to get that multi unit, you know, so it's, there's there's many opportunities here and connecting with the right people is going to get you there. If it's going to be through real estate, it's going to be through stock hacking. There's going to be lots of information that we can uh, do together. And I, I, I really excited to see what our members think of it. And hopefully they can log in and get into your, your, your class um, starting at the end of February, February 25th. February 25th, first one, and we'll do one in the fall as well. But they folks can start with the free report. And uh, Kayla, Kayla keeps telling us no, but if anyone, if anyone does buy the course, uh, OLW gets, uh, gets compensation for it. I'm okay. You know, like, because when Kayla goes to like needs a hotel room to go advocate on behalf, she shouldn't be, in my opinion, she shouldn't be paying out of pocket for it. Right? You know, don't honestly, I just, I want to bring value. And that's what I've always did. Like, so many people are like, what can I do? What can I give you? And I'm like, you know what? You've done, you've done so much now just by being a part of our members and take the information that I'm giving you now on the phone or by message. I want you to bring that back into our community, bring that to your elected officials, be that voice that you need to do and, and help each other. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we have a problem within our society and our industry is that we're not connected. We're not having that. It's always about a dollar, uh, a value when it comes down to help and guidance and i that's what i wanted to have you want to to give that that part to you so make sure that we we'll give it back to your 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 charity that you have there as well erwin because i think what you're doing in hamilton is, is phenomenal and it definitely moves uh moves people and how heartful uh you and cherry are and how you've been supportive in my advocacy efforts and guidance uh through over the years and you know definitely from our last t-shirt that we had at our conference you know how help, helping me think that you know help landlords help tenants and that's what our goal always has been with ontario landlords watch um and you know i don't think anyone can knock what we're doing because we are trying to help good tenants good landlords and we're also trying to protect taxpayers at the same time by creating different ways of trying to improve the housing industry um based on what we see and and what the issues are because we have a, a huge iceberg and we're only looking at the top half or the elected officials are only looking at the top. We want to bring uh, that picture of what that bottom of the iceberg looks like and start knocking down because it will still take years after they know the issues. It will still still take years just to implement it. Um, but it's 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 still an uphill battle. You know, we always want to continue to keep advocating. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. Uh, lots of little timbits that we're giving them and they're learning through, you know, podcasts and interviews that they get to see. Um, but we do have to look out for ourselves as well. And I'm glad to have you on so that you can explain what stock hacking is all about. Because you you talked about it when, when I meet with uh, your podcast or, or coming down into Burlington to be a your meetings and i've always had that that openness but when i got to see how your slides were there's definitely a lot of opportunities that i think we're missing here and i think we should be exploring that thank you yeah. and then uh, just uh, folks to understand 15 minutes a day is all you need and a smartphone that's it that's it once you get good at it which doesn't take that long like my kid cousin was killing it <laughs> professional musician play, he plays he plays piano and trombone I played the trombone in high school. <laughs> You'll be good at this time. <laughs> Try to play it now. Don't even get me on that. <laughs> but if anyone has questions, you know, reach out to Erwin on Facebook. He's happy to answer any type of questions before you take the plunge. And but definitely get into the links below uh, in our group and the group description in the broadcast description. Uh, so you guys can get signed up. You know, it's not going to hurt, and you're going to be able to, you know, thank yourself for you know trying to explore this and don't uh, don't knock it until you try it, right, Ir Irwin? Oh yeah, I, yeah. yeah. No, I wish I, I wish I started <laughs> sooner. <laughs> do I keep the podcast going until my husband gets the kids to sleep, or do we wrap it up and we'll have? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, he's not watching. <laughs>
<laughs> but I want to thank you again for, for sharing uh, what you have to, to offer our members. And I know that based on who you are and your network of who you come from, um, definitely people would be, um, it's just a pleasure just to be a part of your network. And I want to thank you again for all your support for Ontario Landless Watch and the advocacy effort that we've been uh, working with for, for almost 12 years in July. So it's it's been great. Happy to help. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone. Safe, safe drive to Ottawa. <laughs> I better. I better. If not, I'm hitchhiking with a trucker to get myself up there. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, everyone, for watching. We'll have another broadcast, interviews regarding our landlords who are dealing with some crazy experiences dealing with the Landlord and Tenant Board. And we're going to give you more of our suggestions of different changes that we want to offer, um, suggestions to the government in order to implement so that we can create a fair and balanced housing system that does protect good landlords, good tenants, and taxpayers. Thank you all.